Hi and welcome to a video on finding antiderivatives. We're going to learn in this section basically how to undo the power rule for differentiation. So let me start with that. So if we had a function, I'll just use 3x to the fifth minus 4x squared, we could write out its derivative fairly quickly, but I'm going to do that along with giving sort of a quick summary of what we did to arrive at that portion of the derivative. I don't need to do any rewrite. This is ready to just use power rule. So the first thing that we learned quite some time ago, I believe, for power rule was that that exponent comes down and gets multiplied. So I'm going to write multiply exponent by coefficient. And again, these are just shorthand so you can see where we're getting. So this will be 15. I'm going to always keep the base the same. We're not changing angles or bases here, so that stays in x. And then we subtract 1 from the exponent. Again, this is something that I believe we've known for a long time. And then I'll do it again for the next term. So that'll be minus, bring down the 2, and multiply the exponent by that coefficient. So that turns into an 8. Keep the base the same. Subtract 1 from my exponent. I don't need to write x to the first. And we've arrived at the first derivative. So now what we need to do is think about how, if I gave you this first derivative, how could you come up with that original function? So we're trying to undo the derivative, so to speak. So it's an antiderivative. So we're going to do exactly the reverse order. So if we first did this, then did that, then did that, one, two, three, for the order to find a derivative, we're going to do it exactly in the reverse order. So that was for derivatives. So we're going to start from the bottom and work our way up. And we're going to do pretty much exactly the opposite uh, mathematical operation that it tells us. So if it tells us to subtract one, I'm going to undo that by adding one, right? Because that would add to zero. I'm still going to keep the base the same. That's going to become important. And then instead of multiplying the coefficient, we're going to divide by that exponent. Okay, so let's see what this looks like. So for example, if I wanted to anti-differentiate 2x dx, and I'll talk about that symbol here in a second. Well, this is x squared plus c. So there's a few things to talk about here. Why is it x squared? Well, because the coefficient is just going to come along for the ride for a minute. Keep your base the same. I'm going to do this in the reverse order. So I'm going to add 1 to my exponent, so that would be a 2, and then divide by that exponent. And now I can see that 2 divided by 2 is 1, so that's where the x squared comes in. What is this plus c? Well, if we look at some function, and let's just say we have x to the 7th plus 4, when we find the derivative of this, that plus 4 or that constant has a derivative of 0. So I don't actually notice it on the derivative, but when I'm working backwards, I don't really know if there is a constant there or not, so I have to account for it because when I took the derivative, it would have turned into 0. So let's check our example that we started with and see if this works for this problem, which might be a little bit more um, in depth than just x squared. So if I give you this yellow highlighted first derivative, could you come up with that original function? Well, let's see. I'm going to say I'm going to anti-derive this. I'm going to work backwards. So if I go backwards from the first derivative, I get the original. I'm going to keep the coefficient there just for a minute of 15. Keep your base the same. And now let's go through this from bottom to top. So I'm going to add 1 to my exponent, so that would be a 5. I keep the base the same, which I've already done, and I divide by that new exponent, right? Add 1, 
divide. Minus, keep your coefficient of 8, keep your base the same, so now I will add 1 to that exponent, which is 2, and divide by that 2. And what I can see is this is exactly equivalent to what I did start with, because 15 divided by 5 is 3, so that will be 3x to the 5th, and this will be minus 4x squared. Now what I will say is if you're finding this antiderivative, so if you are given the derivative and you're trying to find the original, you will have to account for some c value. Again, there could have been a constant there, and when I took the derivative of that constant, it goes to 0. So this is really just looking at power rule. So if you need to do a rewrite, you will have to do that rewrite, and I'll show you what I mean as we go through these examples. Um, this symbol is the antiderivative or integral symbol. So that means find the antiderivative of. So you're answering the question, what did I take the derivative of with respect to x, so where x is my um, base, um, when I'm talking about the power, right, x is my base. So what did I take the derivative of to get 2x? So you can always check these pretty simply. So I wrote that out and did an example. Um, again, when you see a fraction bar in your problem, you do not have a quotient rule built in for antiderivatives. Again, this is just power rule, so you rewrite it as a negative exponent so you can see what that base and exponent or power is. And then when you're integrating with respect to x, you're going to add 1 to that exponent of x and divide by that same new exponent. I rewrote it. Either one of these would have been fine. You don't have to. Okay, so let's, and, and here's another polynomial. Um, if you want it for your examples, you can pause the video and try it. Um, the one thing I will note is that if you are given f, lowercase f, and you are asked to find the most general antiderivative, you're going to need to make sure that you notate it correctly. And so how that looks is if I have f of x, I do a first derivative, we know that to be f prime, and I do the derivative again, that's f double prime, and I can keep going down that list. If I have f double prime and I do the antiderivative, I get f prime, and if I have f prime and I do the antiderivative, I get f. But what happens if I take the antiderivative of lowercase f? We've denoted that to be capital F of x. So you'll notice my capital F there in pink. Um, and then I went through that. So you can certainly use that to check your polynomial power rule for anti-differentiation. And then let's go on to this one though. So if I'm given this function g of x, again, and I'm trying to find an antiderivative, I really just want you to focus on power rule because you know, there is no quotient rule for anti-differentiation. You will learn something in Calc 2 called integration by parts. It still really is not um, a quotient rule, but it might get you out of it. Um, you'll learn other techniques of integration in Calc 2, um, but there is no quotient rule per se. There's just some techniques that might help you evaluate that integral. So I need to do a rewrite when at all possible. So this is still lowercase g. And you can either write this times x to the negative 6 and then distribute that in, or you can individually look at it like this and calculate it from here. So every single term has to get divided by x to the 6th. It doesn't matter truly which route you go, if you're writing these as negative exponents, right, whether you distribute this in or whether you separate the terms, you're going to get the same thing. So I should end up at this same place regardless of my method there for my rewrite. So let's find this antiderivative, so I'll call it capital G. Coefficients are going to stay, again they might 
change, right, because I multiply or divide, but they're going to temporarily stay. Keep your base the same. I'm going to add 1 to that exponent, so be careful. Negative 6 plus 1 is negative 5, and divide by that negative 5. I'll keep this minus 4 for a minute. Now keep your base the same. Add 1 to your exponent, negative 2, and divide by that new exponent. And then plus 2, well, this is really 2x to the 0, if we remember that from derivatives. So I'll keep my base the same. When I add 1, I get 2x to the first. We don't usually write um, a 1 there, but you certainly can. It's not wrong. Over 1, and I'm going to make sure I have that plus c there just in case. This would be a fine answer. I will just go through one quick rewrite here because 5 divided by negative 5 is negative 1. Negative 4 divided by negative 2 is positive 2. And I'm done. Now, most times in calculus, we are perfectly fine with negative exponents. If you are not, you certainly could get rid of your negative exponents. Or if you have to do something with this equation, then perhaps you want to fix your negative exponents. That's entirely up to you. These two answers, whether it's the black one above or this orange one below, are equivalent. Okay, this is just one last example because this is now going to be a specific antiderivative. It's not necessarily a general anymore because I'm giving you information that's going to allow you to solve for the C value or the constant of integration. So if I'm given F prime, I'll just rewrite it here so I can not have stuff in between it. Okay, I can find f, because again, this was a first derivative, so I'll take the antiderivative one time and I'm back at the original. The 8 is going to stay. My base stays the same. I will add 1 and divide by that number. Plus 12. Keep your base the same. Again, add 1 to your exponent, so it becomes a 2 over 2 plus 3, and again, this is really x to the 0, so when I add 1 to that exponent, it does become x to the first over 1, and I'm going to keep that plus c. Don't forget your constant of integration. So if I just um, divide what I can, or um, some, not really combining like terms because I can't in this case, but if I just try to simplify or reduce this to the best of my ability, I'll have something that might be easier to work with. So here is my general antiderivative, okay? But they asked me to find f, find this specific function for f that makes this true. So I need f of 1 to be 6. So my function is 6 when x is 1, which will allow me to solve for c. So 6 equals 2 plus 6 plus 3 plus c. So negative 5 equals c. So what I know is that my specific function should be 2x to the fourth plus 6x squared plus 3x minus 5. My c was a negative 5. And that part is my final answer. Not the general in this case because they gave me information that allowed me to solve for that specific antiderivative. Again, this is just the beginnings of this. This will come more throughout the course and you'll get more techniques of integration as you go through. This is just talking about the power rule. I hope this helps.